Hi, welcome to the screencast on mastering. If you've gotten this far, you're about ready to unleash your music genius to the world. So mastering is the last step in our recording process. So we've done tracking and mixing, and now we're up to mastering. Mastering is the step after mixing and we're getting your track ready to sound the best it can on all different systems. So your ears and your brains are the best assets for mastering. You've got to think monitor, meter and mindset. After mixing, we've gotten this stereo track and our mastering session is not a huge session like our mixing sessions. It's just a stereo track and maybe some reference tracks. The main thing to remember is that we're making the music sound the best it possibly can be. So we're listening to that mixed down track and finding the music's best qualities. Think about where people will be listening to this track. Is your main target streaming services? Will you be hoping to license your track for advertising? Will it be on TV or will it be in the clubs? Monitoring is really important with mastering. Having a good set of true colorless monitors is ideal so you can hear detail. Mastering cannot be done with earbuds, even though that is a end system that people will hear your music in you'd want to hope that the people would be listening on their hi-fis or their sound bars at home and earbuds just don't give you that detail in the bass or in the high frequencies that you'll want to have to ensure that your music sounds good on a variety of systems a lot of mastering studios are filled with different kinds of speakers and each, each set of speakers represents a different system or quality of system. So you don't need to buy three to five sets of speakers. You can be resourceful and take this mix to three to five systems, your car, laptop, phone, club PA. Know your sound systems, listen to loads of music on them, and listen to this mix down track. Use fresh ears. Rest between listens and use a notepad to jot down comments. If you only hear an issue in one certain environment, it's probably nothing to be too concerned about. Basic workflow. Like I said, it's a smaller session mastering. We've just got our track and then we've got effects on that track. So the first thing that I like to get set is the gain and that's and the limiter. Then I like to do EQ. So when I've been listening to the track on different systems, I've been thinking about what EQ I could use. And then we add compression. And in the final stages of our effect chain, we have our meters. And this is our reference for loudness, stereo field and spectrum. In these meters, we check our mix down track to our reference track. For delivery format, there may be another effect like dither that you might need to add to the effects chain or a broadcast or delivery standard in the meter. In this slide, you'll just see an example of the mastering workflow in Ableton. You'll see our mix down track and our reference track. There's our gain in the utility and our stereo enhancer, EQ8 and compressor, multiband compressor and a limiter. And these can all be found in this little inspector window where you find audio effects. So on the master track in Ableton, we have our meters. We have spectrum and I've used Insight 2 by isotope meter. And this is just simply so we can switch between our switch between metering our mix down track and our reference 
track seamlessly. In Pro Tools, this is how our effects chain looks. On our master, we have loudness meter, insight to stereo field meter and spectrum. If you're not wanting to spring for um, any specific metering, you can just use your master meter in VU. And I'll go through that later. You, then you've also got a dither plugin. And on your rep, mix down track, we've used gain with our clip gain line. And that's in view, clip, clip gain line, and EQ3, seven band, and D3 compressor and limiter. I wanna talk a little bit more about loudness because that is the biggest question that most students ask when it comes to mastering. They wanna know how they can make their track as loud as everything else on the radio. So there's a big difference between measuring loud and sounding loud. Sounding loud is often due to good arrangement and mixing decisions. Loudness is different to sample to sample peak waveforms like you see in this diagram. Loudness is actually how it affects our ears. And our ears hear different frequencies differently. For example, high highs and bass sounds our ears are more sensitive to. And so these could be perceived as louder. When we're measuring loudness, we use things that average the dB over a specific time. VU meters are your old school averaging system. They used to be on those old mixing desks. There used to be a VU meter for every track. For mastering, we set zero VU to negative 11 dB. So that way you can always go into the red and you know that's safe. With RMS, that's a newer way of averaging. And it, I learnt with RMS, but it doesn't take into account the bass being louder in the ear. So be careful with making bass sounds too loud if you're using RMS as your meter. Now, LUFS is a newest way of averaging and it takes into account the human ear hearing bass and treble sounds louder. So in Ian Shepard's Mastering Essentials in Sound on Sound, he goes through a few examples of some modern tracks and the LUFS. For example, Sia Chandelier is at negative five LUFS. Mark Ronson Uptown Funk is at negative 11 LUFS and Tool is at negative 16 LUFS. So if you've got Pro Tools and you're wanting to just use a VU meter rather than any other fancy meters, you could also use RMS, but the way you access it is a little bit secret. You go to Pro Tools, Setup, Preferences and Metering. And here you can set your master and track meters to VU or RMS. There's free loudness meters. You can check out M Loudness Analyzer. So an important thing to remember when we're measuring loudness is that you're wanting to balance the loudness of your mix down track to the reference track. So you're trying to make it about look about the same in the VU meter or RMS averaging. When we've balanced the loudness of our mix down track to our reference track, the next step is to balance EQ. So we've been listening to this mix down track on different systems and we may have found qualities we want to enhance like the bass drum, high vocal, guitar crunch or air. Remember you're dealing with a stereo track here. So big changes may incur massive artifacts. So be careful. Always use reference tracks or other album tracks to balance EQ. Use a spectrogram and listen to frequencies in the mid and on the side to see if you want to use a mid side EQ. For those of you trying to use the stock plugins in Pro Tools, but you don't have a default mid side EQ or spectrogram, here I've got a link to do to doing mid side mastering the old school way 
Well, there's also Fab Filter Pro Q3 or Ozone 9 from Isotope that you can buy to help you along. After we've balanced our loudness and the EQ, it's time to do some compression and limiting. So far, we've just used gain and limiting to set our loudness meter. That's not perfect because ideally we just want the limiter to act on those transients and let the compressor compress the body of the song. Of course, there's many options with compression, mid-side and multi-band compression. They can overcomplicate things easily. So if you want to do mid-side compression, maybe try a stereo enhancer instead before you try it. And always just try a normal compressor before using a multi-band compressor. Well, lots of mastering engineers actually have expensive vintage analog gear hardware <laughs> that they use as part of their mastering process. I really recommend that you start mastering just with the default plugins before you start spending the dollars. You really get a great sense of listening and a great sense of your system just through using your ears and, def and default plugins. When you are compressing, remember to keep in reference with your loudness meter and your desired LUFS. Delivery and format is our last tick on the mastering box. And it's all about optimizing the track for its delivery format. It might just be one format file if a client is using a digital aggregator. Well, like I said, I often like to give it two, two options, but also you might also have to make a higher bit depth option if the client is submitting them their tracks themselves to Apple Music or, to, or for vinyl pressing. Always remember to limit your master to negative one dB true peak for errorless encoding. And I gave you that tip. It's about negative three dB sample peak. Codecs are getting updated frequently, so I don't want you to spend a lot of time with in codec preview. Metadata also, no need to spend time on that. The one thing I want you to spend time on in delivery and format is, is previewing loudness penalty. So streaming services use RMS or LUFS to make all tracks the same volume. For example, YouTube and Amazon use negative 14 LUFS, while Spotify use a different system. So like use loudnesspenalty.com to test how your track sounds in different streaming formats before you decide on your master. And then we're done. Get ready to unleash that genius onto the world. Good luck. <laughs>